Because of a very grave mistake on the part of John Jones in the Nutty Putty Cave, took his life and ended in great tragedy for him and his family. Before seeing video, subscribe and enjoy to get notified with more videos. John Jones was no stranger to exploring caves. He had gone with his father and brother many times before as a child, and exploration of caves was a well-liked activity in his family in general. Right before the Thanksgiving holiday in November 2009, the Jones family decided to take a trip to one of the nearby cave systems, known as the Nutty Putty Cave as a way of spending time with each other. And this huge group decided to explore this cave because they never had before. While the family started together, soon after the start John Jones and his brother Josh Jones went a little ahead, and they found themselves in a slightly narrower part of the cave, where John Jones broke off a little further and headed down the crevasse that was at a tapered angle from the rest of the cave system. When John realized that it was too narrow for him to turn back he decided to go a little forward, because he felt that the chamber in front of him was a drop to a more open space where he would ideally have enough space to maneuver and turn back around. At this point, John Jones was crawling head first into a cave that was essentially getting narrower and more perpendicular to the ground, which meant that there came a point where he was at an almost 90 degree angle in the cave, and it was so narrow that he was held between the columns of the cave, John Jones felt in this part of the cave that he would perhaps not be able to move forward unless he sucked his chest in a bit, or perhaps he did it instinctively. It is not known, but rescuers believe that he sucking his chest in at this point was the reason he went farther than he could have had he not done. So and right after that, when his chest expanded again because of his natural breathing rhythm, he got stuck. The reason this happened, was because having his chest sucked in, caused him to go into an even narrower portion of the cave, and because of this he was jammed at a point, where he could not possibly go forward from, or could not come back out either. Rescuers and people with knowledge of the area also said that even if John Jones could have gone forward into the cave it could not have mattered, as there wasn't nearly enough space. Even further, to do what John had been wanting to do, he was going to be stuck either way because the chamber closed off after the point where he was at. John Jones Cave Incident John Edward Jones entered the Nutty Putty Cave at around 8 p.m. local time on the evening of November 24, 2009, as a means of spending some time with his family, right before Thanksgiving doing something they had always loved doing. John Jones was 26 at the time of the incident, and he had wife, Emily, a daughter of one year, Elizabeth, and a son on the way that would have been born in June 2020. At the time of the Nutty Putty Cave incident, John Jones was attending medical school in Virginia, and this six-foot guy was in the prime of his life, no doubt, with a beautiful family and promising career ahead of him. About an hour into the caving expedition, John Jones decided to find the Nutty Putty Cave formation known as the Birth Canal, which is a tight passage that spelunkers must crawl through carefully and in addition to being extremely narrow and slippery. It is also extremely perpendicular to the ground, meaning that the person needs to go headfirst towards gravity, the opposite of what the human body is meant to do. John Jones was in a part of the Nutty Putty cave system, that he thought was the birth canal, and he inched his way into the narrow passage head first, moving forward using his hips, stomach, and fingers. But he realized he'd made a grave mistake, when he found the passage getting narrower and not giving way like the birth canal should have been. John Jones would have turned back at this stage of his cave exploration when he realized that he wasn't in the right branch of the cave, but the problem was that it was too narrow to even wriggle back out the way, which meant that he had to try to press forward because he thought that there was a widening of the crevasse in front of him which would allow him to come back out. John's brother Josh found him soon after he had gotten stuck, and he tried to figure out some way to get his brother out, 
but to no avail, because the space was too narrow for Josh himself to do any significant to pull out his brother. Even though Josh tried to pull at his brother's calves, John just slid down into the passage even further, because the Nutty Putty cave is extremely slippery. By midnight of the same day, rescuers had started to arrive, and the person who was leading the rescue team, Susie Matola, reached out to John Jones in the cave soon after. Susie Matola arrived at the cave at about 12.30 a.m. on November 25th and at that time John had been trapped for three and a half hours. Matola introduced herself to John, even though all she could see of him was a pair of navy and black running shoes, to which John responded, faint and distant, hi Susie, thanks for coming, John said, but I really, really want to get out. After this introduction began the process of rescuing John Jones, but even after about 28 hours of effort nothing could be done. There came a point where, it did seem like the pulley system they were using was about to work, and as they pulled John through the pulley, it did seem like he moved a bit. But then his feet hit the selling above them as his body moved upward leading to the horrific realization that if they were to get him out, they would have to bend his legs in a way that would break them. With this realization, it was becoming more evident, that it would probably not possible to get him out in time, because even as all these processes were happening, John Jones's body was going through massive cardiovascular stress because he was stuck upside down, and he was quickly getting sicker and sicker because of the posture. And so sometime after midnight of November 25th, John Jones stopped responding, and it was ascertained that he had suffered from a cardiac arrest. After his death, it was decided that it would still be far too difficult to get John Jones' body out, because he was still stuck at the bad angle and now that he would not be able to respond to any efforts and unlikely that he could come out. Therefore a decision was made, to fill up the cave with his body inside and seal the mouth of the cave, with concrete to make a memorial or burial site for him. The Nutty Putty Cave has therefore been closed, since the John Jones incident and a plaque has been put up, at the sealed mouth of the cave in his memory. In this brief guide we looked at the story about John Jones and Nutty Putty Cave, and how this tragic situation unfolded.